what vocal awareness is, is empowerment through voice. I teach, I come from art. I have a master's in voice. I'm in a trained, I'm an, I'm a trained classical singer, even though I don't articulate very well in the moment, apparently. And in the arts or in athletics, mastery exists. But it doesn't really exist in any other disciplines unless one is pursuing a profound spiritual pursuit, like one becomes a monk, etc., where you are really focused in this as your life purpose. In sport, I've, I've trained any number of superstar athletes in virtually any sport, from even motorcycle dragsters to my 16th NFL players going into the Hall of Fame this August, or great artists. And in their skill set, they are in mastery. But in the rest of their life, they are like the rest of us. Vocal awareness, this work, teaches communication mastery. In every other discipline, there is an off switch. In vocal awareness, there is no off switch. So before we were on camera, I was speaking with you and Jenna, or Jenna and you, about stature. Not being a presentational technique, but reflecting the embodiment of who we are. And when you just did that, the first thing you did was inhale. All mastery requires the integration of two principles. Always mind, body, spirit. It's not mind, body, and spirit. It's mind, body, spirit with slash lines. It's what I call in vocal awareness the trinity, three in one. In sport, an athlete has a ritual, and the ritual never changes, and it has a spiritual component. In the wings, the performer has a moment to center before they come out. But in life, in business, we just go and do that PowerPoint presentation, or we get on the Skype call and we just speak, because speech is habit. There was a Wall Street Journal interview with me a couple of years ago where I gave several tips. And one of them was, the meeting begins before you walk in the room. I want to be in charge of how I want to be known. In your generation, there's a chapter in my new book I call Fingers and Thumbs. Your preferred mode of communication is texting, IMing, sending emails. We lose the art of verbal discourse. This eye contact that we're engaged with right now doesn't happen when I'm typing you an email. And in those kinds of conversations, we control the information, emotional information, mm -hmm. personal information. We're sending data. I, you can't even tell, except if I make big bold type, if I'm <laughs> angry or passionate or whatever, but still, you're not feeling the energy of this communication. You're only seeing my words. And I don't get to exchange with you. Yes, I'm exchanging like that. But not in this way. In this new book, I speak about reframing the concept of the bottom line. It's not just fiscal. It's human capital. How do we, through the leadership of vocal awareness, help people embody and respect first interpersonally who they are and then how they want to teach, treat, interface with everybody we come in contact with personally, professionally. So this is a little bit of what I do, Chase, to answer your question in, in a cliff note version. 